Okay, uh, welcome. Uh, today we're going to start our series where we take a look at how to make a match three game similar to Candy Crush or Bejeweled or pretty much any match three game you've ever played uh, using Game Maker Studio 2 and the Game Maker language. So, first things first, um, I'm using Game Maker Studio 2 because I record on my MacBook and that's the one that works with this. I've tried everything out in Studio 1.4 and it works just fine. So if you're using Studio 1.4, it should work just fine for you. If you want to use Studio 2, or if you've never used it before, you can download the trial version. And we're not using too many assets today, so everything that we do today should be fine for the trial version. So, um, if you go to Game Maker Studios website, it's at yoyogames.com. I'll include the link in the description. You can just go to Get Game Maker. You have to make an account for the trial version, but that's not that big of a deal. All right, so we're going to start our new Game Maker project. So once you get Game Maker Studio up and running, this is what it looks like. I'm going to go to New. I'm going to choose the Game Maker Language Project, and I'm going to name this Candy Like, and save it. Uh, this is what the main screen for Game Maker Studio 2 looks like. It's almost reversed. Career Game Maker Studio 1.4. All of this stuff is over here on this side. So let's talk about Candy Crush, uh, which almost feels a little weird to actually talk about. So this is Candy Crush Saga. This is what it looks like. I'm just going to talk about the gameplay and how that works. Get rid of these things here. Okay, so it's match through game. It gives you hints. Uh, if you match three things in a row, like that, and then they explode and everything else falls down. And if you get four, you get more points, and you get like a special power-up. If you get five, you get a different power-up. Hopefully everybody knows what a match three game is, but I mean, who knows? So that's what it looks like. It's really kind of mindless fun, but it provides some interesting challenges for creating a game. So let's do that. First thing I want to do is I want to create some sprites, and I'm going to import the art I made in the part zero video for that. So over here I'm going to go to sprites, I'm going to right click, create sprite. Now a lot of people have this convention of doing SPR underscore for their sprite names. I like to do S underscored. Uh, the reason they use SPR is because there's sounds and scripts, but I'll do different for those. So I'll do S underscore. This is going to be a background tile. And I'm going to edit the image here, and I'm going to go up to Image, and I want to uh, import Strip Image. And I'll find my Strip Image here, choose on my desktop maybe. Oh, it's in my Documents. Yep, there it is, Match 3 Strip, I just didn't see it. All right, so my Strip Image here has nine images in a row. I want to take uh, just the first image. 32 by 32 horizontal offset. So if I hit convert, it should bring in just my first image, which I'm going to use for my background tile. So I'm done with this, so I'll X out of that. I'm going to set my center, or my origin, to be middle center, and my speed to be zero. Since there's only one image, I don't need to change that, but I find it makes things just a little neater. There's my background tile. I'm going to import another sprite, and this is going to be for my dots. And I'm going to use dots. You could use whatever you want to, uh, it's just so long as you're matching colors together, colors and shapes, hopefully. So again, I'm going to go to Edit Image, and Image, Import Strip Image, and Match 3 Strip. This time, I'm going to have 8 frames, 8 frames per row. Uh, 32 by 32, and I'm going to do a horizontal pixel offset of 32, which means it's going to start with the, not the first frame, which we already did, but the next ones. And I'll hit convert, and yes. And there I've got my eight different frames. So I'll just X out of this, set my speed to zero. In Game Maker Studio 1.4, you have to set your speed to zero in the create event of the object, but I'll cover that when we get to it. Uh, and for each of these, I'll set them to middle center as well. Okay, so now I'm going to create a couple objects here. So down in my objects, 
I'm going to create a new object. This first one is going to be a controller object or a game manager. And this just exists kind of in the back of the room. This is going to monitor the creation of our game and later on it's going to monitor the score and stuff like that too. So I'm not going to assign a sprite. I don't need this to be visible. I'm going to add an event to this and first we'll do a create event. So I'm going to just kind of delete this code and start with three slashes so I can do a description. And my description here is just going to be initialize the game. Okay, so first I want to know how many uh, of these squares wide I want my grid to be that I make. So I'm going to say width is equal to, and I'll do 10, and then I want to know how many squares tall it is. So I'll do height is equal to, I'll say 14. Now I need to know an offset between each of these. So offset is going to be just how wide the sprites are, which is 32. Now I need to know an x start and a y start. So I'll do x start equals, for now I'll set it to 0, and y start equals, set that to 0 as well. Now I'll jump back in to take a look at the document camera here in just a second. It was a bit too soon. Uh, I want to take a look at my room first before I do that. So if you're using Studio 2, it'll automatically create a room for you. Um, if you're using 1.4, then you have to make a room. I'm going to call this r underscore room 1 and I'll open that up. And okay. So the change menus for Studio 1.4 are slightly different. There's these tabs up here. I want to go to the properties though and I want to set the width and height. So I want to have at least 10 rows wide and there are 32 pixels per row. So my number of pixels has to be at least 10 times 32 which is 320. So I'm going to do let's say I'll do another 40 pixels on each side. So this is going to be, actually, no, I'll do 340 on that side. And then for my height, I'll do 640. Is that right? I want it to be roughly 16 by 9, so it's similar to phone size. Yeah, we'll say that. OK, so now. I'm just going to drag in my game manager object, and I'm pretty much, oops, put it inside the room. I'm pretty much done with the room for now, except for maybe setting my background there. Let me look at my background here, and I'll make it something maybe dark gray, but not quite black. All right, so done with my room. Now, uh, to the document camera. So I want to have my width be 10, my height be 14. So if I'm taking a look at this, Let's just kind of imagine what this looks like. So I've got my screen here. Part of my super bad drawing. I'm going to have a certain amount on each side. And then I've got my 10 cells here that are 32 each. So this is 320 pixels. I made the whole thing 340, uh, which means that I have 20 pixels extra, which means that I need to have 10 pixel padding on each side in order for it to fit the way it's supposed to. Now we don't have to center it top to bottom. Uh, I wanted to do 14 cells tall, uh, 14 times 32. Let's see, that's 320 plus 128 is 448, unless I made a mistake. And then the room that I set up here, let me jump back to Game Maker. Oh, I already closed it. Okay. The room that I set up is 640, so if I subtract the 448 from 640, what I'm going to be left with is, let's see, 192, and I have 192 pixels to split between the top and the bottom. I'm going to put more on top than I am on bottom. Let's say I put 128 up here, so if I subtract 128 from 192, uh, that's 64. So then I'll have 64 pixels down here. Now I need to do all this math because I need to find out where my start position is. Where I want my first, man, that's a bad line. Uh, where I want my first uh, x start and y start to be. So 
My first X position is going to be 10 pixels over, but then I put my origin to the center, so it's going to be another 16 pixels after that. So my first X position is going to be 26 pixels in. My first Y position is going to be 128 pixels down, but then it's going to be another 16 pixels after that because I put my origin at the center. And so my Y position is going to be uh, 144. So this is my X start, and this is my Y start. 26 and 144. So I'm going to pop back into Game Maker here and look at my objects. So my X start, I just said, is 26. And my Y start is 144. Okay, so I got my X start, my Y start, I got my offset. Now, before I do anything else in here, I'm going to create another object. So I'm going to right click, create object. I'm going to call this O underscore background tile. And this one I will give a sprite. I'll give it the background tile sprite. And I'm not going to do any any uh, events to this just yet. So I'll just X out of that. All right, so I did that so that over here I can create them. So again, just kind of looking at the camera here. The way we're going to create them is we're going to start with a certain X position here. And then we're going to create every cell in this column. So create the 14 cells going down here. And then we'll move to the next X position. Create the 14 cells going down. And do that 10 times across, 140 times, or 14 times down to make a total of 140 cells. And that'll be our grid. So to do that, we're going to use something called a for loop. So what a for loop does is it creates an integer. I'm going to call it i to start. And we're going to put a starting point for it. So i equals 0. We're going to continue this as long as i is less than the width because i in this case is going to represent the x value of the cells. And then we're going to increase i by 1 every time. And that's what that plus plus means. So that's like let's imagine I start with 0. So on my 0x cell, I'm going to create something at the 0, 0 position, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4. So I'm going to have to use another for loop to create the y values. So for, I just used i, so I can't use i again. I'll use j equals to 0. j is less than height. And j uh, plus plus. And I'll put, um, zoom in here. I just kind of thought about that. You guys probably would appreciate it if I zoomed in a bit. So I've got my variable i. This is going to be j. Uh, I need to do semicolons between these. It's an easy mistake to make. Um, when you're creating for statements, these are each like individual thoughts, which is why they're not separated by commas. They're not arguments, they're constructors. They're pieces of the argument. Um, okay, and so what I'll do here is instance underscore create. And if you're using 1.4, it's just instance underscore create. If you're using 2.0, it's instance underscore, underscore create layer. And I have to tell it where to create. So. Again, I keep flipping back to the paper here. Um, this first one is going to be created at 28, which is the X start position. But then the next one is going to be created 32 more than that, which is 28 plus 32. And then 32 after that, 32 after that. I could manually place these, but I can use some linear algebra. Uh, this is a pattern here. 16 and 16 plus 32 is 48. And plus 32 is... I'm not thinking 80, and then plus 32 is 112, so on and so forth. Um, what I can do then is just say that my starting position is 16, which is like the B, or not 16, 26, which is like the B in a linear equation, and the amount that I'm increasing each time is 32. So if I do 32 times I, my first position is going to be here because I starts out at 0. So 32 times I plus 26. And then again, just to make this nicer, instead of using 26, I'll call it x start, which we defined above as 26. I'll do something very similar for the y positions. They're 32 apart, only this time I'm going to use j. And instead of adding the x start, I'm going to add the y start. This way it's easier for me to move stuff around in code, and it's much simpler to create it that way. 
So my x position here is going to be uh, 32. Or actually, do, do, do. let's create another variable here, just so I don't have to hard code those numbers. Let's say, oh no, I already did. <laughs> offset, OK. So I'm going to do offset, which is 32, times i plus x start. And then we'll do offset times j plus y start. Now, if you're using Studio 1.4, you don't have to do the next part, but we're using 2.0, so we have to pass in a layer value as well. And we're just going to put this on the instances layer, which by default is layer 0. And then we have to tell it what to create. And we're going to create O underscore background tile. All right. So I think that should be, that should be good. If I go over here, just save this object, and then hit play. And let's see if we have what we're supposed to have. Or if I made any errors, which is incredibly possible. Okay, it's looking good down there. There we go. All right, so we got Cubicure Studio 2. And there's our grid. So next time, we're going to fill this grid with dots randomly. And we're going to eventually look at moving them, getting matches to be found, getting stuff to fall when there's a match. But this is just the first step for today. So thank you very much. Congratulations on doing your first step. And have a wonderful day. Oh, if you have any questions or comments or concerns, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Um, I left my Twitter link too, where I'll post uh, news about upcoming videos. So have a great day.